Hi, my name is Harish Sivaramakrishnan. I'm a developer evangelist at Adobe Systems. And today I'm gonna show you um, a small little tutorial as to how your Flash Flex applications could work side by side with HTML5 features. So we keep hearing about how, uh, how Flash and HTML5 could work complementarily. So this is a small demonstration as to how you could leverage some of the HTML5 features right within your Flash about Flex Action Script applications. So um, today we will uh, look at uh, one use case, which is using the client-side data store that HTML5 has, how we could bring that feature right within your Flash Flex applications by writing some bit of Action Script, some bit of JavaScript. Most of it has been already done as a library, which I already have uh, in, in, in uh, my presentation. So we could just take a look at what it entails to kind of leverage the HTML5 features into your Flash Flex application without really having to do a lot of coding. So that's the idea. So let's get started. OK, so what we have here is a simple Flex application, which is a project dashboard. So it's got five projects, alpha, beta, up to epsilon. So this is getting driven by a simple XML file that sits in my server, which is data.xml, so uh, what you see in this application is uh, the data that is consumed and kind of shown in a data grid. So a classic use case for offline would be when the server is not available. You would still want to see this information, something which you have always done in your Air applications, but not so much in your Flex applications or Flash applications, because uh, they don't have the offline capability at the moment, but then HTML5 compatible browsers kind of bring you the local store. So we're just trying to see how we could kind of tie the local store, kind of offline cache your data and kind of make it available when your server is, is still not up. So let's kind of get started and look at a small little utility class that is called SQL Utils. So this is available as a library, which I would I would tell you where it is available and how you could download it, but then let's just quickly look at the code. So um, SQL Utils is nothing but a simple class which kind of uh, deals with all the JavaScript magic that you need to do to kind of work with your local uh, data store in your HTML5. So you could see there is a small external interface register callbacks which kind of registers your Swift and has a variety of methods here. As you see, there is a create database, there is a create table, do insert, do select, do delete, do update. So this is nothing but a utility library that you could use to kind of start working with your JavaScript without really bothering about the external interface boilerplating. And also, there is an equivalent JavaScript file called sqlutils.js, which will go along with your HTML template when you publish your Flash Flex applications. Uh, which kind of receives the calls from the Flex application and performs all the DB operations and kind of gives you back the information that is required. It's fairly straightforward. It's a simple execute query method, which kind of accepts your SQL string, the parameters that you need to pass, and also a callback, which will get registered back to your Flex application. So the whole idea is that you don't need to know much about what's happening under the hood. The whole premise is that you should be able to work with um, HTML5 without having to write a lot of code. So let's get started by kind of adding some bit of code to this. So uh, to get our local store access, we need to create an instance of our SQL utils. So let me just create a variable of type SQL utils. There you go. And you can see that a package called flex.sqlsqlutils is imported. Let's just now create uh, an instance of this. So sqlutils new. There you go. And it requires a value to be passed as a string. And that value is nothing but the name of the Swift that would be embedded in your HTML. So as you see in this application, we have named it HTML5 flex demo onemxml So the value you would pass is HTML5 flex demo one 
there you go. So this just registers your Swift with um, the JavaScript. So anything that you want to perform on the Swift, it will receive your callbacks and it will receive all the um, work that you're doing in the JavaScript side seamlessly back. So now that we have created the instance of SQL utils, I'm going to add a couple of lines of code. So which is a couple of event listeners uh, to start with. That is the first one is to create a DB once the database is created on the JavaScript side. It would give me an event. Uh, which should be listened, and also there is a global error if in case if your application refuses to work, or you have a problem working with the JavaScript site, it will give you a generic error event which could be captured. So, uh, and finally, we have a simple function call, which is sqlutils.create database. So, let's create a database called db3. So, the syntax is pretty simple. The first one is the name of the database, and then you have a version. Uh, you can have a description about your database and finally the size of your database. So once you do that, you could just quickly go ahead and add your event listeners on db created of type SQL event returns void. Yep, and the event to handle the error, event listener to handle the error rather, sorry. Okay, so uh, what would happen is when this application starts up right now, when I run this application, it would attempt to create a database by the name DB3. And if we are successful in doing that, I should get the DB created event firing, and I would get the this listener to fire. If there is an error, of course, we'll get to the error. So I have a small log text area here, so let me just add a small little debug trace message here, DB created, or if we are getting a generic error, we will say db error. All right, now let us go ahead and run this application. Okay, oh, looks like we have a small little error from the JavaScript side. So as you see, um, while the Swift tried to kind of get access to the JavaScript, um, the JavaScript kind of was not able to do the callback. So it looks like we have a small little problem in our code. Let's go back. Ah, there you go. So there is a small little typo that I made. So the file is actually called HTML5 flex demo one, but I have a L missing in the title that I gave. So let's just change that one and run this again. Hopefully you should be fine this time. Yes, so as you can see, the, the log now says DB created. So just to make sure that the DB is indeed created, let's just go to the Safari's web inspector and go to databases. You can see there is a database called DB created, which currently has nothing in it. So it's as simple as that. So you just need to kind of um, call the method at the ActionScript side, and the sqlutils.as class kind of does all the interfacing with the JavaScript using external interface, and you could very easily start working with almost all SQL APIs that you have uh, in the JavaScript side. So I'm going to quickly switch over to an application which I have already completed, which is pretty similar to this, and we can quickly look at the code that we got to kind of get this working. So let's switch back to the design view of this. It's it's the same as what we saw. And we have a project dashboard, a log, and there's a button which says sync locally. So when I click this button, we should actually trigger off a way to kind of sync all the records that we have in the server to the local client data store so that when you don't have the server, you could retrieve that from the local. So let's just look at what happens when I click the button. There's a button click handler. So on the button click handler, I have a simple SQL statement, which is a create table statement. It creates a table with two fields, name and revenue, and kind of calls the method create table on SQL utils. So let me go ahead and run this one. So when I say sync locally, you can actually see a table has been created. So the, the trace set, the table is 
indeed created. So now, once the table is created, uh, you will get an event handler which is on table created. And once the table is created, the next logical step is to kind of take all the records in the data grid and insert it into the data store. So I have a method which is called insert to table. Uh, it's pretty simple. It just picks up the records from the data provider and kind of creates an SQL statement and inserts it. So since we have to do that uh, kind of synchronously one after the other, because uh, after one record is inserted, you'll get the event back and then you have to proceed. So we have a simple counter, and the counter gets incremented every time when the on insert method is fired. So on insert is fired every time you have a successful insert. So you just increment the counter and kind of insert that to the table. So once this is done, uh, we could just go back to Safari and check the web inspector. We have the databases. And there you could see there is alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. So it kind of inserted the data right within your local store. So now you could pretty easily uh, retrieve this data by running a simple select statement just the way we are doing our inserts and create. So uh, you could simply write a select star from projects would give you back all the records that you inserted into the local data store as an array collection, and you could tie it back to your application. So it's pretty simple. So um, what I would show as the last part of the demo is as to how this could be used to build a full-fledged application. So. I have my MAMP server running, so which typically means my application could access the data from the server. So let me run this demo application. There you go. It kind of is a simple market replay style application. So, uh, so right now it says it's connected and it has got some data in here. You can play it. You can slide it. Stop it. You can do a set of things. It's 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 a it's a regular market replay style application. But then what happens is when your server goes off, this application would stop working because it's running on the browser. So let's try to simulate an offline use case by stopping my server. So let me do that by stopping my server. Yes, so I have stopped my server. If I reload the page, you can see that it's disconnected and there is no data available from the server. But there's a button which says load from local storage. Once I click that, you can see that the data has now come back entirely loaded from the local storage as opposed to coming from the server. So this is a good demonstration of how you could kind of use or leverage this API that would help you to kind of use the HTML5 data store to get your Flex application have an offline life of its own. So you can now have your Flash Flex applications work offline. So uh, summarizing, all you would require is to download um, the library, sqlutils.asjs, which is kind of I'll, uh, made available in my blog. Um, you can just download it and put it into your source path and just compile your application and kind of follow the simple APIs. And you can pretty much use uh, all the HTML5 data store related capabilities uh, into your Flash Flex applications. So for uh, more information about working with Flex applications specifically, uh, you could always check out Adobe Developer Connection. Specifically regarding Flex and HTML5, feel free to check out my blog. And there is a post uh, which has the download link to the library that you would need to get this application working. Thank you.